When it's time to put the Christmas decor away, that can only mean one thing is just around the corner. Conference play. The Michigan State men's basketball team will have one more non-conference game on Friday against Buffalo before the Spartans dive headfirst into three months stacked with Big Ten matchups. After the insanity that was the month of November, Coach Tom Izzo says the calmness December brought was much needed for he and his team. It seems as if the Spartans have returned to a little bit of normalcy all around with Jaden Aikens back in the lineup and now with Malik Hall set to return on Friday. Izzo made it very clear Hall will not be operating at 100%, so in the meantime, he and his staff are looking to others to step up and fill the void. You know, hopefully Jaden, this will be a good time for Jaden. And, uh, you know, I need to see more out of Pierre. I mean, Pierre's the other key guy for us, uh, and he's got to come along. I, I still think Jackson is making some progress. I'm looking at the guys behind. Looked at a lot of film with Marty of his early part of the year compared to late part of the year, and a lot of it was just aggressiveness, you know, getting more shots. Staying at the Brezzi for coach Susie Merchant and the Michigan State women's basketball team, there was no time to ease back into things from the holiday break. They kicked off conference play today, and who better to do it against than the number four team in all of the land? The Breslin Center was the place to be this afternoon. It was bumping inside with the undefeated Hoosiers in town, and the Spartans wasted no time putting on a show. Kamaria McDaniel doing what she does best. She'll step back, and that one is good for two of her team high 24 points to put the Spartans up by two. The Hoosiers would bite back Chloe Moore McNeil with the bounce pass to Mackenzie Holmes, who had 32 points today. Yes, 32 to bring Indiana within four, but Michigan State just couldn't miss. Matilda Eck gets caught in traffic, and even with the defender in her face, she gets that one to rattle on home to extend the lead, and they would just keep adding to it. Dee Dee Hageman with a step back, and she just drains the triple. Michigan State shot 56% from the floor and had four players shooting in double digits. To help the Spartans hand Indiana their first loss of the season, taking down the Hoosiers 83-78 to the final. A massive win for Coach Susie Merchant, and she says it tastes so much sweeter at home. It did feel really, really good to have to, to play here because you go to Indiana, we've been on the other end of that. I mean, it's pretty loud in their gym when we play there. So it was our opportunity for our fans to kind of give us what we needed down the stretch. And I thought they were a big factor um, for us, our energy. We brought the energy, but they did too, you know. And so I, I think down the stretch it was important for us to um, hear them so we could kind of build our confidence too. East Lansing wasn't the only town with some good hoops on slate for the night. Out in Ann Arbor, fans packed the Chrysler Center as the Wolverines got one more shot at a non-conference foe, Central Michigan. First half, Wolverines get it to Hunter Dickinson, and you know what happens next. He slams it down to put Michigan up 21-15. to The chip's going to show that they can fly, too. Brian Taylor with the slam to bring Central within two. In the second half, Kobe Bufkin, he'll drive, and not only will he get the bucket, but he'll get the whistle, too. That'll extend the Michigan lead to four. The Wolverines led by one with 16 seconds left to play, and that's where legends are born. Reggie Bass knocks down the game-winning triple to help Central Michigan take care of business. They top Michigan 63-61 to the final. Staying with the Maize and Blue, the Michigan Wolverines are officially 48 hours out from their second straight appearance in a semifinal game in the college football playoffs. All eyes have been on the defense and how they're going to slow down TCU's Max Duggan, but co-captain and defensive lineman Mozzie Smith has been getting some extra attention ahead of the matchup on Saturday as well. Now, if you remember, Smith was pulled over back in early October for speeding. The Ann Arbor Police Department found him to be illegally carrying a firearm and driving Driving without a license. The senior from Grand Rapids pled guilty to a misdemeanor weapons charge earlier this month. On Wednesday, Smith said he was in the process of applying for a concealed weapons permit when the traffic stop occurred. The star defensive lineman took to the podium ahead of the Fiesta Bowl to speak for the first time publicly about the situation, and he says it's a big life lesson. Even if a mistake is made and you're trying to do everything in the right way, you still got to reap what you sow. You still got to, at the end of the day, be a man and stand up and um, accept the consequences of your actions. And that's with everything. And, um, you know, luckily, I've been able to continue to play ball and continue to, um, you know, play ball in the future. And um, luckily, this hasn't derailed my entire everything that I work for. But uh, it just puts things in perspective, you know.
That'll do it for sports. David will be back after the break for a final look at your forecast.